were asked to multiply the rational expressions, then state the domain. In the first product we have 12x squared divided by five times 15 divided by 18x. We multiply rational expressions just like we multiply fractions. We multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, and then simplify the result. So for this product, the numerator is 12x squared times 15. The denominator is five times 18x. Before we determine these products though, we'll write each term in prime factored form to identify the common factors between the numerator and denominator that will simplify to one. The prime factorization of 12 is two times two times three. So we write 12x squared as two times two times three times x times x. The prime factorization of 15 is three times five. In the denominator, five is prime. The prime factorization of 18 is two times three times three. So we write 18x as two times three times three times x. And now we identify the common factors between the numerator and denominator. Notice they share a common factor of two, common factor of three, common factor of x, another common factor of three, and a common factor of five. Because any non-zero value divided by itself is equal to one, all these common factors simplify to one. Two divided by two simplifies to one, as well as three divided by three, x divided by x, three divided by three, and five divided by five. The remaining factors give us a simplified product. Notice how we have two x in the numerator and a one in the denominator. Two x divided by one simplifies to two x. So this is the simplified product, but we also need to give the domain. To determine the domain of a rational expression, we begin with all real numbers and then exclude the values that make the denominator equal to zero in the non-simplified rational expression. So looking at the expression in this form here, notice how when x equals zero, we would have a zero in the denominator, and because division by zero is undefined, we must exclude zero from the domain. So we can say the domain is all real numbers except zero, but we often give the domain by giving the values the variable cannot equal. So here we'll just say x can't equal zero. In the next product we have the quantity y squared plus two y minus 24 divided by the quantity two y squared minus three y minus nine times the quantity y minus three divided by the quantity y squared minus four y. So when we multiply, the numerator is going to be y squared plus two y minus 24 times quantity y minus three. The denominator is going to be two y squared minus three y minus nine times the quantity y squared minus four y. And now we'll factor to identify the common factors between the numerator and denominator. y squared plus two y minus 24 factors into two binomial factors. The terms in the first positions are y and y, because y times y equals y squared. The terms in the second positions are the factors of negative 24 that add to positive two, which are positive six and negative four, because positive six times negative four is negative 24, and positive six plus negative four is positive two. Y minus three does not factor, and now we'll factor y squared minus three y minus nine. We can factor this by grouping, but let's use trial and error. Because the first term is two y squared, the terms in the first positions are two y and y. The terms in the second positions will be the factors of negative nine, so that the sum of the inner and outer product is equal to negative three y. So if we put minus three here and positive three here, notice how we do have negative six y as an outer product and positive three y as an inner product, which does give a sum of negative three y. And now we factor y squared minus four y by factoring out the greatest common factor of y, so we'd have y times the quantity y minus four. And now we identify the common factors between the numerator and denominator. 
Notice how they share a common factor of y minus four as well as a common factor of y minus three. These factors simplify to one, again, because any non-zero value divided by itself is equal to one. So y minus four divided by y minus four is one, and so is y minus three divided by y minus three. The remaining factors give us the simplified product. So we have the quantity y plus six divided by, in the denominator we have y times the quantity two y plus three. So this is the simplified product, but we still need to give the domain. Beginning with all real numbers, we exclude the values that make the denominator equal to zero in the non-simplified expression, which would be this expression here before we simplified. We'll notice y minus four is equal to zero when y equals four, so y can't equal four. If y is zero here, the denominator would be zero, so y can't equal zero. Y minus three is equal to zero when y equals three, so y cannot equal three. And then finally, we need to figure out what makes two y plus three equal to zero. If we set two y plus three equal to zero and subtract three on both sides, we have two y equals negative three, divide both sides by two, we have y equals negative three halves. So y also cannot equal negative three halves. So this means the domain is all real numbers except negative three halves, zero, three, and four. I hope you found this helpful.